Coulter, she turns my stomach in, in a way that I, I can't think. Well, Jeannie, uh, Jeannie Thomas, the wife of uh, Uncle Clarence, turns my stomach the same way. Uh, Ann Coulter used to, but she, um, uh, well, I, I mean, she still does. <laughs> what am I saying? Ann Coulter has always just hit my gag reflex, especially back during the Bush years when she was at her peak. Um, she is really nobody right now that really matters until she opens her her fly trap and, and says things that are so out. For example, um, she mocked on X. She went on X, went out of her way to mock the tears that Gus Waltz uh, you know, uh, Tim Waltz's son, so openly displayed last night. If you watch that, that young man who's 17 years old and who suffers, suffers from a couple of learning disabilities, which we'll get to in a second, but he was so overjoyed. Did you see him, you know, and he's standing up, pointing at the stage and saying, that's my dad, that's my dad. I mean, oh my God, the love that this kid has for his pop. It was just... But Ann Calder, she just couldn't wait. Um, after uh, after last night, I think she went on X this morning, and she wrote, "Talk about weird." Talking about the tears, that was what she was texting about, accusing this seventeen-year-old kid of being weird because he was so happy and enthusiastic for his dad. And one person wrote back, and there, a lot of people responded to Ann Coulter's little puke. Uh, she was quickly condemned, but one person wrote back, quote, a son emotionally moved by a father who he clearly loves is weird to you? That's petty and not helpful to whatever point you're trying to make on the election, end quote. Well, Ann Coulter doesn't make any points about anything. Ann Coulter is just a washed out, middle-aged woman who really doesn't have a whole lot of anything to say about anything. But what happened was, you know, after he got on stage, Tim Waltz, he, he spent a lot of time thanking and hailing his family and expressing his love for them. And at one point, he, he, he mentioned for the whole world to hear to his family, his wife and son and daughter, he said, quote, you are my whole world, and he also, in his speech, he highlighted the infertility struggles that, that he and his wife Gwen had to go through. And he told the crowd about the difficulties they both had uh, when they tried to conceive their two kids, Hope and, and, and Gus, uh, the young boy. Anyway, it was at that moment when uh, Gus, moved by his father's remarks, leaped out of his seat to say, that's my dad. And, and if you saw it, and the camera was on and pointing his index finger towards the stage where his father was speaking. And he burst into tears. And his daughter, Hope, the, the older of the two, who's 23, uh, she was seen making a heart symbol gesture and staring at her father with, with nothing but love and admiration. And meanwhile, a lot of people on the net, were hailing the Waltz family for expressing their emotions publicly. I mean, how many of us can do that, right? Uh, many people on X were writing, quote, this is called parenting, end quote. Yeah, it is. Um, and one of the people who uh, uh, responded on X to, to this emotional scene took a very um, obvious swipe at the orange vomit, this person wrote on X, quote, Can you imagine Melania and the rest showing that much genuine affection for Donald? <laughs> and quote, that goddamn family wouldn't even show up when he was on trial. <laughs> I mean, except the one that looks like walking cat piss. But anyway, um, a lot of people were quick to note that Gus Waltz has a... Uh, a, a neural disease. I, I believe he is. Uh, uh, I read he's neurodivergent. I'd never seen that before. Uh, he's got ADHD. He has anxiety. Uh, he's got a nonverbal learning disorder. Um, and 
one user on X who apparently has experience with this, knowledge of it, wrote that uh, Gus might struggle with controlling his feelings as kids in this situation do when they are in social situations, like the one that Gus found himself in last night. And, of course, Tim Waltz has been very public, so has Gwen, um, about the the struggle that this 17-year-old kid has gone through. Um, as you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, ADHD is a brain development problem. And the most prominent characterization of that is the uh, difficulty in controlling one's impulses. There's hyperactivity, uh, difficulties in ma- maintaining focus. I think we all know about this now because of the publicity this disorder got in the 80s uh, or in the 90s, really, when it really started to catch the attention of the American public. Um, anyway, Tim Waltz and, and Gwen Waltz made clear in a statement recently to People magazine that they never saw Gus's conditions as a barrier. Um in the article, they're quoted as saying, quote, like so many American families, it took us time to figure out how to make sure we did everything we could to make sure that Gus would be set up for success as he was growing up. End quote. And Gus and Gwen also made the point of saying that their son's condition is, quote, not a setback, but his secret power. End quote. But good old Ann Coulter... Oh, couldn't wait to open her little fly trap of a mouth, huh? Uh. Anyway, the uh, Walsh family's candor about all this uh, and and the readiness to share the story in public. And this is according to Advocates for Americans with Learning Disabilities. But the willingness of the Walsh family to do this so publicly is going to bring much needed attention that may be able to help others in facing comparable difficulties. And according to one Zoe Gross, who's director of advocacy for the Washington-based Autistic Self-Advocacy Network, she said, quote, it's a good thing when people in politics who are running for office are comfortable discussing disability issues and don't view it as a taboo or something that we shouldn't discuss, end quote. So, and then, of course, the obvious, more people may may now, after what uh, Gus and Gwen Waltz have have shared with the public, a lot of people might now feel a little more comfortable sharing their own disabilities or discussing the experiences in their own families. And I I think it's something that really is important. You know, when somebody has learning disabilities, um, it's really they just see the world entirely different from the way we do. And they react to the world that they see and taste and smell and touch entirely different from the way we do. And it's that difference that can put a lot of people off, make a lot of people turn away or say, oh, gee, what's wrong with that kid? You know, that kind of shit. You, you, I'm sure you're familiar with what I'm talking about. I, I don't mean to suggest that you feel that way. Or I feel that way. No, absolutely not. But a lot of people who are probably Trump supporters would feel that way. You know how Trump mocked the uh, the reporter for PBS who has a neurologic or a, a neuromuscular condition. What was it uh, cerebral palsy? I, I forget what it was. But early in Trump's career, remember when I think he was running for office in 2016. And and stood there on stage in front of people and, and went into this jerky, herky, stupid look on his face, waving his hands in the air, just totally, completely mocking someone who had the temerity to criticize him or question his motives. You remember that? Of course you do. So I, I doubt seriously if it'll be too long before Trump will try to mock Gus Waltz in Trump's attempt to claw his way back in front of his filthy, stinking crowd of supporters who love that shit. I mean, they really do. Who? Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 
24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, can, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.